Hello and welcome to this critical care teaching video. Today we're going to look at the subject of referral to critical care and in particular which patients referred to us should we be admitting into the critical care unit. I'm going to give you a framework for how to go about assessing a patient's suitability for admission to critical care and that framework is the three R's. How do we go about making decisions for admission to critical care? Quite clearly, not all patients referred to us are admitted, but our decisions on admission need to be robust and defensible. The three R's then are reversibility, reserve and rehabilitation. Let's take reversibility first. Multi-organ support within intensive care buys a patient time to get over whatever physiological insult they are suffering from. Ventilators, inotropes and other organ support means are not treatments. They are simply means of buying the patient time. The underlying pathology that resulted in the need for that organ support requires its own therapy. That may be antibiotics in the case of sepsis, surgery for bowel obstruction or trauma, chemotherapy for cancers. Our organ support though is not a treatment in its own right. The exact cause of the deterioration for the patient in front of you may well not be known at the time of that referral into intensive care. The differential diagnosis may be very wide and as such we may not have any idea if the acute pathology that patient is suffering from can in fact be reversed. It is very common that we are asked to see acutely unwell patients that need urgent organ support, but we don't yet know what the cause of the deterioration is. We simply don't know if it's reversible. But it is perfectly acceptable to admit these patients to intensive care and provide organ support while further investigations are undertaken. If we later prove that that acute pathology is reversible, then that is the time to start considering discussions around withdrawal of care amongst the multidisciplinary team and the patient's representatives. Our second R is reserve. Critical illness is incredibly physiologically stressful for our patients and it is vital that they have enough reserve to survive. One of the markers of physiological reserve is performance status and this is being increasingly used in planning admission to critical care, elective surgery and the like. Performance status score is ranked from 0 to 4, with patients' performance status score 0 able to carry out all normal activity without any restriction. And that progresses to patients that are left completely disabled, who are unable to carry out any self-care and are totally confined to the bed or chair when they reach performance status score 4. Exercise tolerance is also a very useful marker of physiological reserve. The absolute minimum exercise tolerance that predicts successful liberation from invasive ventilation is approximately 10 meters of walking without stopping. Other simple questions that can give you an idea of physiological reserve include, can you manage a flight of stairs without stopping? Can you make it around the supermarket easily? Be very careful about asking your patients if they can do their own shopping. Many is the junior doctor who's been caught out by patients saying yes, when in fact they do it all online. Our third R then stands for rehabilitation. Critical illness will leave a lasting mark on our patients. Lung function may well worsen and as a result, exercise tolerance may deteriorate. Many of our patients, as much as 50% in some studies, never return to their work and many are left with significant mental health problems, in particular anxiety and post-traumatic stress. We should therefore, wherever possible, explore what an acceptable outcome for the patient would be, assuming they survive intensive care. Clearly that's not always possible, and often we rely on a patient's families to help build a picture of what would be acceptable in the long term. The key here is finding out what our individual patient wants, not what we think would be okay for them or what the family think. It's about what our patients want. In summary then, when you go to see a patient referred into intensive care, 
ask yourself three questions. Is the pathology here likely to be reversible? Does this patient have the physiological reserve to survive critical illness? And is the long-term outcome that would be acceptable for the patient realistically achievable after a period of rehabilitation? I hope you found this video helpful. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And I hope to see you on the next one.